This is VOA News via remote. I'm Diane Roberts. The funeral of South Africa's anti-apartheid icon Archbishop Desmond Tutu has been set for January 1st, his foundation announced. The Nobel Peace Prize laureate and veteran of South Africa's struggle against apartheid died Sunday at the age of 90, the presidency said. The foundation said in a statement, quote, while arrangements for a week of mourning are still in their infancy, end quote, the period would lead to the archbishop's funeral January 1st in Cape Town. Reaction continues. U.S. President Joe Biden said Tutu followed his spiritual calling to create a better, freer, and more equal world. Quote, his legacy transcends borders and will echo throughout the ages, end quote. Former President Barack Obama said, quote, Archbishop Desmond Tutu was a mentor, a friend, and a moral compass for me and so many others, end quote. In 1984, the South African cleric and activist won the Nobel Peace Prize for his nonviolent opposition to white minority rule. A decade later, he witnessed the end of that regime and chaired a Truth and Reconciliation Commission set up to unearth atrocities committed during those dark days. Holiday travel headaches and safety worries swelled Sunday with thousands of flights canceled, events scrapped, and new Omicron cases soaring as people wrap up Christmas celebrations bruised by a resurgent COVID pandemic. Some 7,900 flights have been grounded and tens of thousands more delayed from Friday through Sunday, one of the busiest travel periods of the year, with multiple airlines acknowledging that Omicron spikes have prompted staffing shortages. The highly transmissible Omicron strain has sent new cases skyrocketing across the globe with countries reviving dreaded lockdowns. This is VOA News. Iran has banned the entry of travelers from Britain, France, Denmark, and Norway for 15 days as part of curbs following the discovery of the highly transmissible Omicron variant of COVID-19 in the Middle East's worst-hit country. State television said Sunday a similar ban imposed in late November on travelers from South Africa and seven neighboring countries was also extended for 15 days. Health authorities also indefinitely halted land travel to neighboring Turkey, a popular tourist destination, the broadcaster said. Iran is the pandemic's epicenter in the Middle East. The Palestinian Health Ministry said Sunday it had identified the first case of the Omicron coronavirus variant in the Gaza Strip. The carrier is a Gaza resident who was infected within the coastal territory, a ministry official told a news conference. NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg has sought a meeting of the NATO-Russia Council next month and contacted Moscow to secure its attendance, an alliance spokesperson said Sunday. Stoltenberg has, on several occasions in recent months, offered to resume dialogue with Moscow through this body, set up in 2002, but currently inactive because of the conflict in Ukraine. But Russian authorities have not responded favorably. NATO has consistently denounced Russia's 2014 annexation of Crimea from Ukraine. Earlier this month, Moscow presented the West with sweeping security demands, saying NATO must not admit new members and seeking to bar the United States from establishing new bases in former Soviet republics. The January 12th meeting is the first proposed by Stoltenberg since Moscow made its demands. Tens of thousands of Sudanese protesters rallied this weekend, two months after a military coup, demanding that soldiers, quote, go back to the barracks, end quote, and calling for a transition to civilian rule. Authorities had warned protesters against approaching sovereign and strategic sites in central Khartoum, a reference to main government buildings and key institutions. A 5.4 magnitude earthquake struck off the Greek island of Crete Sunday, the Athens Observatory said in a statement, with no damage yet reported. The quake had a depth of 10 kilometers with an epicenter In the sea, 45 kilometers south of the island of Kazos, near Crete, the observatory said. In the same area, another quake of 5.2 magnitude struck at a depth of 9 kilometers, again with no damage reported. Greece is located on a number of fault lines and is sporadically hit by earthquakes. For more on these and other stories, please visit us at voanews.com or download our easy-to-use mobile app via remote Diane Roberts, VOA.
This is VOA News. Via remote, I'm Diane Roberts. U.S. health authorities Monday cut in half the recommended isolation time for people with asymptomatic COVID-19. This as President Joe Biden warned Americans not to panic amid a surge of cases threatening wider social disruption. Speaking about the rapidly spreading Omicron variant, Mr. Biden said some U.S. hospitals could be overrun, but the country is generally well prepared to meet the latest surge. The coronavirus continued to punch holes in airlines as busy Christmas holiday schedules Monday, with multiple airlines saying spikes in cases of the Omicron variant have caused staffing shortages. The CDC recommendations, which cut isolation for asymptomatic cases from 10 to 5 days, opened the way for people to return to work sooner, minimizing the prospect of mass labor shortages in key parts of the economy. The recommendations further suggest that the five-day isolation period be followed by five days of wearing a mask when around others. Here is some other coronavirus news. The French government will order companies to oblige employees to work from home for at least three days in a bid to stem a fifth wave of COVID infections, the prime minister said. Denmark, Greece, and Iceland report record daily coronavirus cases as the Omicron variant makes Europe the global hotspot for infections and deaths. South Africans remembered anti-apartheid hero Archbishop Desmond Tutu with cathedral bells, flowers, and warm words Monday, a day after he died in a Cape Town nursing home at age 90. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa paid tribute to anti tribute to Tutu after visiting his family residence in Cape Town Monday. Ramaphosa spent time with Tutu's widow, grandchildren, and other family members. This is VOA News. Negotiators trying to save the landmark Iran nuclear deal resumed discussions Monday with the European Union chair warning of difficult work ahead. Negotiations to salvage the 2015 agreement restarted in late November after a five-month hiatus following the election of ultra-conservative Iran President Ibrahim Raisi. The talks seek to bring back the United States after it left the accord in 2018 and curtail Iran's nuclear activities stepped up in response to the U.S. withdrawal and reimposed sanctions. EU diplomat Enrique Mora, who is chairing the talks, said all sides were showing, quote, a clear will to work toward the successful end of this negotiation, end quote. Mora told reporters after the eighth round of talks hosted in Vienna began, it's a very good sign, quote, we will be working very seriously in the days and weeks ahead, end quote. U.S. President Joe Biden signed into law the National Defense Authorization Act, or NDAA, for fiscal year 2022, the White House said Monday. It authorizes $770 billion in defense spending. Earlier this month, the Senate and the House of Representatives voted overwhelmingly for the defense bill with strong support from both Democrats and Republicans for the annual legislation setting policy for the Department of Defense. The NDAA is one of the only major pieces of legislation that becomes law every year and has done so every year for six decades. The aviation authority run by the Houthi administration in Yemen has allowed temporary resumption of flights by the United Nations and other organizations to Sana International Airport Monday, the Houthi-run Saba News Agency said. The Iran-aligned Houthi movement said earlier this month that the capital's airport had been put out of operation after airstrikes carried out by the Saudi-led coalition fighting in Yemen. The coalition said it only attacked military targets at the airport from where drone strikes have been launched against Saudi targets. Lebanon's president called for an end to a government boycott Monday, implicitly criticizing his Hezbollah for his ally Hezbollah for blocking cabinet meetings since October over demands to fire a judge. Lebanon's fragile government, formed in September to stem the country's worst financial crisis, has not met for more than two months since October 12th. The Iran-backed Shiite movement, Hezbollah, and its Amal movement ally, headed by parliamentary speaker Nabi Beri, are spearheading the boycott. They are demanding the replacement of the judge investigating a blast that ripped through the capital of Beirut in August of 2020 by remote Diane.